Be happy, it's gonna have to be a lifestyle switch. And if you wanna be happy, you're gonna have to do the work in deep. Quick fixes become better diets to take back your time and live your life for you. Cause if you wanna be happy, it's gonna have to be a lifestyle switch. We're back! Guess who's back? Back again. Jess is back. Had too much caffeine. Caffeine? Hello, hello, hello. Um, I'm covered in paint. Um, I'm not even going to bother saying sorry, not sorry. I'm just covered in paint. Um, I'm in the middle of uh, priming uh, my next project, having finished one project <laughs> about half an hour ago. I'm priming the next one. Um, a lovely little chest of drawers bureau with like the fold down desk. Uh, it's really old and it's taking a lot of TLC. Um, but I'm at the point where I can put the first coat of primer on because sometimes even though you've filled and sanded until you've put some paint on the areas you are painting, you can't see the gap. So we'll prime and then we will do some more filling <laughs> so that we can get a really good finish on it all good fun but it's a very old unit so it will certainly not be the smooth perfection of some of the things that i do some of them we managed to sand back to like completely smooth and then some of them are still very old but fabulous um so that's on covering paint because i'm really enjoying painting at the moment and um i'm gonna go back to it after this but today today we are decluttering our filing cabinet i have my filing cabinet here I haven't done this in a while. I can see I've got this that needs to go in it for sure. So I'm going to pull that down to file into left by Len cabinet. Um, so I, from a paper perspective, filing cabinets are still my absolute fave. You've got like the concertina folders. Those drive me insane. Um, you've got units with lots of little drawers. Those also drive me insane because every time you want one section, you have to pull out like a drawer for each one, whereas your filing cabinet, you just pull the drawer out and I'm pulling my whole unit slightly closer. Um, I actually don't, these top drawers are full of, of cables, so I can't push them shut because having pulled the unit away from the wall, the cables are all like trying to get out. So <laughs> normally these do shut, flush. Um, and then I've also got here, I have these two baskets under my desk. One is sort of electricals, um, and the other one is sort of folders and files and things. Um, and I'm going to do my filing cabinet first. And then if I've got time, I'd like to do these as well. I'd like to get these down to one. There are certain things in this one particularly that need to be relocated. There are certain things in this one that just need to be organized better and possibly relocated. Possibly not. We'll see. Um, and then we have my actual filing cabinet. So papers and office and things. Now let's be honest, a lot of us have paperwork that we just don't need to keep. The main one I'm gonna say straight off the bat is those booklets that tell us how to use things. You can find them on Google. <laughs> you do not need to have them. Um, warranties for things that have expired or sometimes we get those warranty slips and we don't actually activate the warranty. Therefore, that piece of paper is worth nothing. Um, paperwork for items that we no longer have, um, that kind of stuff can go. Um, financial wise, it's going to depend on what country you're in. Um, and the same with like invoices and receipts and things. This does, is not where I keep my receipts for my work. This is quite a small filing cabinet, as you can see. Um, but it's not where I keep my receipts for my work and we should be digitizing. In the UK, you should be moving all your receipts for work into digital format. You do not need to keep the paper ones. And I think it either is, or it is becoming a legal requirement to have them in digital format, but you certainly don't have to have the paper ones anymore as long as you've got the digital ones. So there's lots of apps that do that. Um, I use OneTap, I use the free version of OneTap. You can pay for a version. It's not very expensive, but I'm a cheapskate. Um, and it does make it a lot easier, but I don't have a huge volume of receipts. Um, one tap, you take a picture and it takes all the information off the receipt and puts it in for you. Whereas the free version, you get that five times and then you have to put your own in. Um, 
but I have so few receipts that I don't mind doing that. And maybe when I have more receipts to deal with, I might pay for the paid version. Um, some accountants will give you premium versions of apps like that included with their accountancy package. So it's worth checking that if you've got a business. Um, but this is predominantly personal stuff. So um, I have my little filing labels. I just find a filing cabinet easier. This unit should have, this came from my mum's and it should have wheels on it, but the desk she had, if she put the wheels on, it wouldn't have fitted, but it does mean it's a real arse to get in and out. Um, so at some point, I'm not completely happy with my desk setup. Um, I've actually currently got a desk that a client was getting rid of and then I broke my partner's desk. So he had mine and, and I was on a coffee table on the floor. So I just shoved this in and then never quite got round. It's nice, um, but it's not it's not right for me. Um, and I want to come up with something else. At some point I will. I just I haven't found what I, what I want. <laughs> I haven't found what I want or what I'd like. So at the moment, I'm just sticking with this. It's plain, it's white, simple. Um, I could probably do with a slightly wider one. Um, some of you will hear me talk about the 80-20 rule before. So if you've got like a box like this, you only want to fill it 80%. The 20% left is for getting things in and out. It's for being able to maintain the space in an organized manner. Um, without that 20% of space, um, it just is so hard to maintain, so hard to maintain. Um, the only time you ever want to completely fill is if completely filling stops things from like falling over. Um, so sometimes wedging in a bookcase with like you still, but there'd still be like little gaps in between to be able to get it in and out, but having it mainly full. Um, people often do this with clothes. So they'll fold up all their clothes nicely and they put it all in those little, in like concertina thing, very Marie Kondo. Um, but the problem is it only stays upright when it's full. <laughs> and what they end up finding is they need to buy one of those drawer dividers that has one slot per T-shirt. Because otherwise, as soon as you remove one item, everything falls over. Um, which is why the drawers that I've got that haven't got dividers in divided up that small. Um, I roll things so they're little sausages sat in the bottom of my drawer. Um, I'm actually trying to reduce my I've got a tool unit and two smaller units and I'm trying to make I want to get all my stuff fitting in the tool unit don't want any more stuff than that um but it's a slow progress I think it's um I get there I get there and um, anyway that's not today's conversation so I'm gonna pull out what I've got in here um that is or some plastic organizers that I will probably use a bit of today. I've got my certificates. I quite like keeping my certificates. I haven't got a huge number of them. Um, and the majority of them I still need. Um, some of them are, I guess, could be more memory box, but while this isn't taking out much space, I don't feel international speech competition first place. Look at me go, woo! Second runner up in, in Ms. Galaxy UK. It's got all my personal training qualification ones, which I do need. Got my GCSE certificates. Um, I have no idea if I still need those. <laughs> uh, my personal training diploma. Um, all that fun stuff in here. Although I have a different surname now, so <laughs> presume it's all still thingy. Um, my Oh, life coaching qualification. I've done another one of those as well, actually, that I've never printed the certificate off, which I should probably do at something. My sports nutrition, qualification, mixed martial arts, beginner course, um, and then a couple from a couple of charity events that I did and how much money I raised. Thank you for raising £10,074.33. Woo! Yay me. Um, and then another one, thank you for raising 684 pounds, different event, 10,000 pounds. I don't think I appreciated that, how much that was. Anyway, so that's certificates. Then my, that's my choir. Um, well, I say choir, it's worship team. It's like a rock band on the altar type thing for church. This is empty. I'm gonna put that with there, like with like. 
Um, and then this is actually my daughter's typical one, which is a lot bigger. It's still got loads of space in it and um, because she's only five and they love to give children loads of certificates. Um, I'm like, you don't need that many certificates. She's fine. Can't we make them laminated and then we can just wipe the name off and give it to the next kid? <laughs> but apparently not. Um, apparently that's not not acceptable. But once that starts filling up, some of the older ones we will take out, like the less relevant ones. She did like an online um, pageant um, and she's got the certificate from that. She's got her ones from Baby Ballet, which just are cute, but we don't keep all of them. So maybe we'll just keep one at some point. But those are the folders that I've got at the back that are loose. And then for me, that was a separate one. I have important documents. Uh, house, financial, work, felicity, it's my small human, medical, hobbies, and random. Um, the random is probably the biggest one. Um, I'm going to move that to a new home. Um, and most of this is fairly decluttered, fairly organised already, so I'm not going to go massively into it a huge amount um you could also look at moving your important documents into a firebox we do want to do this but i haven't found a firebox i like yet <laughs> just not very helpful um but first and foremost would be setting up the categories that you want so if you've got nothing to start with is setting up your categories and working out which ones you want to break it down into and um, what i would recommend and how i do it for clients is if they've got a business is that the files and i'm gonna tidy up my house folder today so that the files and the labels are different colors for your so you've got one color so I've got a purple folder with a blue label and then I might have a green folder with a green label. It doesn't doesn't these don't have to be different colours, but for my work stuff. So my work ones. And, whereas I just have one at the moment. I just have one folder for work related things because I'm really good at not having lots of paperwork. Um, so I only need one at the moment. But previously, um, depending on the business I've had, I might have had a separate filing cabinet or I might have just done two colours. Um, at some point I do want to have a slight, I just want a one drawer, but I want a bigger one drawer. And um, and I'll probably break my work up into a couple of different things because I've got a few more projects starting up and it'd be useful to have that split up. But um, that's about a year away that I'm probably gonna need that. Um, but yeah, if you have a separate business, then you would do separate colors or um, you could break it down into loads of different categories. It just depends on how you work. If you find that you've got loads of different folders, you need to break it down a lot more Then maybe you want to have subcategories and then have them broken in between. So it's easier to find. I have so few that I have to look through that I can keep all mine the same. Um, but maybe if you had this, um, um, with some clients I do long term and short term financial, um, they might just have a bank statements one, bank statements, savings and pensions. You might split it up that way. And then all those folders, all the money related folders might be read. All the folders that are to do with um, the personal. So maybe a personal medical hobbies and random might be in green. And then all the stuff that's kids related might be in yellow folders. And um, if you've got multiple, I have one kid folder. There's no point in me giving it a color code as its own individual folder. Um, so they might as well just all match. Um, so yeah, make a list of all the different categories you want to have and then decide if you're going to section those off into different ones or if you're going to keep them like this, if you've got quite a simple situation going on. Um, and then I would start. So if you've got a big pile, um, you want to get a little bit of paper probably to mark it down or because I tend to label towards the end of getting things, get a little pile out. That's a radiator. Um, you want to sit on the floor. Paperwork needs to be done on the floor. <laughs> if you have a medical reason why this isn't going to work, a bed, sitting on your bed, um, or standing over your bed so you can move everything around or a dining table, like a big table. But I prefer floor, it's much easier to work around. So if I didn't have my folder set up and I had my pile of paperwork to sort, I'd put a piece of paper on the floor and write what each one was. And then below it, I could start stacking what each category was. 
label your categories because you will forget and you will start putting house stuff on your medical pile because you've forgotten that that's your medical pile. I am with you on this. It does happen. It's okay. We all do it. Um, so yeah, write your labels down and then you want to be splitting up the items into the different categories. Um, if you are going to do subcategories because you have so many folders, I would split your paperwork first into the subcategories and then stack them so you know how you do it like that. So you put one item like that and then one item like that. So stack them up and then take one pile and break that up again and work your way through like that. Um, and if you spot some obvious get rid of, just get rid of them. If you are not sure, put them in get all your folders sorted and then you can break one folder at a time. It's a lot easier if you've got your folder sorted, pop them into your filing cabinet and then you can do like I'm gonna do today, get one folder out and be like, I am now going to declutter this folder. Um, so for me, this is house stuff. Um, a lot of your bills and stuff are set up online. So I'm gonna take this one as an example. Um, we've got our TV license one. Um, and obviously, depending on your country, depending on your bills, this will vary. Um, we've got the one coming through um, that said, uh, so we'd prepaid for a year. Um, that was coming to an end. And it said, did you want to set up a direct debit? And then I've written on it, direct debit set up the date, how much it was going to be, I wrote on the piece of paper. We then got a letter through from them confirming that direct debit was set up, all the details that I had written on the original letter that asking us to set up a direct debit. So I no longer no need, do not need to keep the one of them setting, asking me to set up the direct debit because I have now done that and I have written proof. The one I've written on, I would keep until I got the written proof. I've now got the written proof, so this one can go in the shredding pile. Do make sure that you are shredding any imported documents. If you haven't got access to a shredder, there are companies that will shred it for you that are like insured to do it. You can buy a shredder if you find yourself having lots of stuff to shred a lot. We both work from home, so us having a shredder is quite handy. Um, and then you can also get these like it looks like those. Do you remember those Tipex mouses? I don't feel like they ever took off, but they used to put like a little waxy strip of Tipex over. So you can get ones that actually work, but they black it out and they are for blacking out addresses and personal details on things. So instead of having to shred the whole thing, you can just go over the important details. However, something like a bank statement where it's the whole page is important details, you probably want to shred that. Um, so TV license, I've got this is, so we've got cancel tax, water. So this was my latest one for my water. So I don't need the old one anymore, so that can go. Um, this is, uh, we made it quick and easy to report repairs. Oh, so this is the pack from our lettings agent with just who we speak to when. Um, to be honest, I've got all of this on the email, but it's only two pages long. Um, <laughs> so um, I'm actually gonna keep that. Um, it's our receipt for our first payment and deposit and our frequently asked questions. I think that all can be kept. Um, and then this, so this is what, this blue folder, this is what these are. <laughs> these are open-sided, not the punch hole pocket ones that fall apart. I prefer the L ones, but I kind of just claim these wherever I find them free. I refuse to buy them. They pop up free all the time, one way or the other, and I, don't want to add to the plastic issue in the UK and um, in the world um, but I would pop them in sections so if I've got something like um, my house one where I have a few so this from the lessons agent has a few I have a few brochures for things within the house but they are not mine to dispose of they um, came with the house so I have to keep them annoyingly um, but anything that's not didn't come with the house that I will double be checking that in a second I can get rid of that um I don't have any of my energy bills they all print online if I need one for proof of address I can get one at any point um the only reason I have printed my water 
um, is because actually we are tracking reducing our water at the moment and at the moment we're overpaying our direct debit and I want to look at that and they had some actually some really good tips on this on the one that they emailed me about reducing your water consumption and where our water consumption is and things um, and I wanted to be able to reference this easily without having to log back in their system is a little bit more complicated to deal with whereas I have an app for the energy I can access that super quickly super easily I did not need to print anything off for that um so that's fine um so there's my three piles so far this one we're gonna check so this one came with the fridge um which is ours so that can that's all in different languages so <laughs> definitely don't need that one um that's the other thing you could tear a torn sections out as well so you'll get like a brochure that looks like three times as thick as that but only two pages will be in the language that you speak or read and um, so therefore you might as well get rid of all the other ones like it's not going to increase the resale price when you sell it on second hand if it's got all the brochures with it and um, in all the languages it's just like it's just not um, this has got a bit about installation and taking it apart. Um, I'm oddly going to keep this because it's so new and it's got the warranty bit with it. Um, that's not the warranty bit that I want. Um, right, that's them trying to charge me more for insurance. Um, that's its energy rating. That is not in english <laughs> um da, 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 we don't need that um this is about the biochemical hazard stuff that you find in fridges i don't need that either um but i am going to keep that bit um I don't need its energy rating certificate. It's got its literage for the fridge and freezer without being here. So I will keep that for the moment though. Um, this is information on our boiler, which is having a part changed on it. So I'm actually going to put that in with the boiler. And then these were all from our lettings agent that they have also emailed over to us so i will double check my partner doesn't want to have a look at that because that is about the heating so we did really well last year well we being my other half i it just went over my head and talking about this to be honest and um, so it was a lot of smile and nodding and um, but he played around with the heating settings and found the way that we could get the most bang for our buck from our heating um our kitchen has underfloor heating the rest of the house doesn't we've got a little gas fire in the sitting room um so we were able to not have all the heating on all the time like we did quite well out of it and um, he did very well and um, so it's worth checking the different timing settings maybe you only thought there was one set of times that you could use and actually you can set up to three on your timer and things so it might be worth googling um what your thingy programmer so ask we can do a seven day different rotation two channels three on and offs per day winning at life um, but before I get rid of that, I will let him have a look at it. We've got it on. We've got a PDF on an email somewhere as well. Um, I did tell them they did not need to print this. And also they printed loads of it in colour. I was just like, I, I don't need to know how the, the dishwasher works. Like, thanks. Because <laughs> if it breaks, I call my landlord and he fixes it. Um, he's a game of the house. Um, and I know how to pack a dishwasher. So I'm pretty sure these can go to... Yes, we can go. Um, what I will do though is I have a box in the loft that is uh, things related to the house that we can't get rid of because they're not ours. I'll actually put them in there and then hopefully it'll save them printing them again next time. Um, and same with that, that can go up in the loft and that's going to go in the same. So none of those need to live in my filing cabinet. I think it was just when we moved in, I just put them away because I just you sort of have that moment of panic don't you when you first move in and you just sort of like ah i've got love to deal with i don't want to deal with this um then this is council tax but it's a lot of pieces of paper and i'm fairly sure i don't need to keep all of this um so that i think is my latest one they send them at weird times um Let's 
June, next July, and I just didn't write it on there. Which one has got? I just want the one that confirms what our direct debit payments are. That one. Mm. Uh, that's really old, so that can go. <laughs> Super old. Um, that proceeds. Oh, wait, that's really old, too. <laughs> don't need that one, don't need that one. I don't need so many pieces of paper for the same thing. That's rubbish. This is Confirming my direct debit details, but it doesn't actually confirm how much, which is handy. This one does, but it's really old, and I don't think accurate. <laughs> That's helpful. Uh, is that? So that. Mm. <laughs> That and that say the exact same thing. Helpful. Um, which letter is newer? They were sent on the same day. They say the same thing. They're just formatted slightly differently. Um, which is silly. Which one looks more official? That, that's got the direct debit logo on it. So I'm going to keep that one. <laughs> They're both the same. They're both the same. They've got the same information on them. Um, that's just a letter about how they send your council tax, which I just, I've, I'm sure I read it in full at the point that it was sent, she says. Um, and then that is the main one for the year. So I will probably keep that. That is again, another copy of the same information. <laughs> copies of the same information did they send um so that one i need to keep that one i do not because my details are confirmed from that one and that one that one is newer than that one so that one can go <laughs> I've got three things that were sent on the same day that all give me the same information. Fun. They obviously have got more, not got enough to do. Um, uh, that's the direct debit, and they set it up on the wrong bank details. So that's fine. That can go. That's very old. That is my main tax bill for the year. So keep that. That is old and out of date, wrong, wrong, completely the wrong account. Okay, so these are all super old too. So that one I'm keeping, that one I'm keeping. And that one I'm keeping. Cool, right, we've got it. Those ones I'm definitely keeping. Let's have a look at, this is... I have... Do not need that one. I uh, do not need that one. That's oh, really old. Do not need that one. 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 Awesome. Nice big pile for the shredder. These are the ones that I actually need. And I'll put the 
top one on the top. Yeah. There we go. Happy. Done. So few things needed. So few things. Um, because so much is digital now, I think you have to really work out what you actually need. I mean, that's half the, the width it was a minute ago. Um, I don't think any of these else need to go through. What's that? Medical bits. That one's quite thick, but lots of ongoing fun dabby doozy going on in there that's fine um i will do a quick scan of this one um mm -hmm. oh i thought i had sent that to somebody else apparently not old passports that are no longer valid. I need to work out what I'm meant to do with these. I know you meant to cut the corners off. Maybe when I apply for the next one I can send it back. That is a super bad picture. <laughs> so bad. So bad. Um, that is all the fun stuff about my divorce. Awesome. Um, Basic disclosure, what even is this? Oh, that was my DBS, my last DBS check, which is expired, I believe. Date of issue. just to prove I had no convictions. It was from 2017. Hmm. I don't remember doing that one. I've had one since then. Um, all basic issues. Does it actually have an expiry date on it? but I thought they only went lasted for a year, but I will keep it as it hasn't actually expired. Oh, do, do, do. Copy of my birth certificate. I think that's my actual birth certificate. That's always handy. Always handy to know you are born and alive and stuff. Uh, that's my baptism certificate. Um, I'm going to put these all into a plastic pocket. And that has to do with my old number plate. That is number plate related. That is my current car. I definitely want to keep that. I want to pair these up slightly better. Then they currently are that is does not belong in there at all. It's nothing to do with cars. <laughs> Always good. Um, That one is tapped, which I will keep just in case. Uh, awesome. Right. This is going to be vehicle registrations together. Grouping like with like. You don't have to group them together. I just prefer to have mine together. That is all about my driving license. And that is my personal registration. I'm going to take out two pockets. That one, that one is falling apart. That's got holes in it. 
Let's take this one. Mm. So these are my favourites. They've got like two slides open. Like that. One of those. That is all related to my driving test. So we'll put all that together. So we know I have a driving license. Always handy. What's this bit? That's that one. Um, that can go. I like that. I should probably just want it to that I thought I'd given to my friend, but I hadn't, so I'll keep hold of that for a moment. There was probably a reason I kept it. Uh, I'm going to take out of the paper envelope and put it in a plastic one. Oh! Hmm. Oh, yeah, that was me coming off a land registry. because then I'll definitely recognise what it is. It's got big letters that says important. <laughs> oh, it is on it. So that is now gone. Uh, these I will all keep together. in there so that for me is all the subcategorizing i need is but if you look at the side of that there's not that much in like if, if you're not a psychopath like me you might not even be worried about breaking it down into smaller ones um i just am i'm not worried about it. i just am breaking them down into smaller ones um like in my daughter she has a school and then a medical within hers and that's about it um just so I don't feel the need to break them down any further. I can go that in the end there. And then these ones just slot in nicely. The end like that. And um, oh uncurl my knees. And um, do you remember if you've got any questions or questions or comments, you can ask them in the comment section. They do pop up on my screen so I can see them. Um, but I'm gonna move on to my other boxes now which aren't so much filing cabinet as I just wanted to get them sorted um oh so this is electrical bits this was in a different box and I relocated it into this one so we have a little a drawstring annoyingly the drawstrings fallen out of it um with all the extra cables in this we only use for my daughter's birthday. So it kind of could do with being somewhere else. And um, this is broken. I'm not sure why I'm keeping it because it smokes and smells like it's on fire and I've replaced it. So that can go. <laughs> I'm I still have I still burn CDs sometimes. So um we shall keep those. That is the other plug if I want a shorter cable portable hard drives that I do actually use. One day I might, I might use this. And um, I am going to put this in my ring light bag because it's a remote, a photo remote. Actually, it should be with cameras, really. I've got a separate box downstairs with camera stuff in, so I'm going to put that into there. Um, this is spare straps for my watch. That's much cleaner than what's in there. Spare straps for my Apple Watch that I do sometimes change, so they are worth keeping, but I don't feel like they should be in here. I think they're probably better kept with my jewellery. So they are going to be relocated there. Uh, headphone bits. Oh. I mean, these bad boys are in pieces. Like I wore these to death. So I've got the wireless ones now. 
um, that I've had for quite a while and are amazing. And these were the ones that were connected that came out the first piece, but they are like held together with sellotape in places. I I think we just let them go. <laughs> just let them go. But this is quite a handy little case. I feel like that might have a purpose somewhere. So I'm not going to get rid of that just yet. Um, but that little cable, you can go into the cable bag actually, and you can go. Sorry. Um, some plastic label pockets. Um, I think I know where they belong and it's not in here. That is my phone that I use for filming case, but I rarely keep the case on. However, I do sometimes. So I'm going to put it where I store the phone. If that makes more sense. Um, my DVD writer, because um, you know, a lot of laptops now don't come with CDD DVD. So I have a plug in one because I do still burn CDs. I'm so old school. This is extra headphone bits. So I'm going to put the little extra microphone in there too. Um, although, I wonder if I can put all the little ones in here. Because this kind of stands out. I know this is headphone related, whereas I haven't written on this bag yet. Um, I'm wondering if all the little headphones some super cheap waterproof headphones that, because I'm swimming, I get bored pretty easily. I wonder if they're all, and that is a little plug-in microphone. I think they'll all fit in. Yeah, that's better. These are so handy though. Little fabric, They I got them for my daughter's first birthday and we had fabric pens and everyone decorated them. But the leftover ones I've used for so many different things. It's wonderful. Um, all right, so this is spare plugs, and they seem to have more than I need. <laughs> um, so I think it's always useful to keep a spare one of these for a USB one, um, because we use them so much. But I seem to have three plugs that look a lot like each other that are all to do with my laptop charger for some reason. I have two of those. So I'm going to just keep the newest one and the other two can go. Do not need duplicates. That is, that's the charger for my um, speaker, which we do take when we travel. So I will keep that and they can then all go into here. Perfect. Um, except the drawstring has gone on this, which is not so perfect, but hey. Ho. Let's go. Hey, ho. Let's go. So that is my all little keeping pile. Keep, keep, keep. You're going to go with cameras. Um, normally that one would be kept with cameras, but if I leave it with cameras, then my daughter will play with it lots. And <laughs> I don't want her to. Uh, these baskets all need repairing. Right. That's that basket empty in the mission to try and merge the two baskets. Empty folder, empty clipboard, which I do use from time to time. That is just my laptop case. So that can go over there. Envelopes, envelopes, envelopes. Where for art thou envelopes? I am going to, we have like blank. Ooh. <laughs> Hello. Um, that was me knocking it with a box, wasn't it? Um, so we have like a box of blank cards. Um, it, my office is fairly neat to store with, <laughs> but there's always more to declutter. Um, I want to be able to live in a shoebox, apparently, um, with no things. Um, we have an arts and crafts box, and we are doing an arts and crafts declutter. I can't remember when, but we have a box packet in our arts and crafts. It's all blank cards and envelopes, so that is going to go down with that. Um, little brown ones, business cards. People get, I wasn't going to do business cards this time when I rebranded and because I never use them. And then loads of people were always asking me for business cards. And you know what, since I had them printed, nobody asked for business cards. Um, <laughs> sods law. Uh, let's have a look what we got here. 
two A4 envelopes. Do not bend ones. I have just been using these up because we never have anything to send that's do not bend. And there is only three of them, so they can stay. That is just plain white paper. I think my daughter had that in the car for drawing in. I'm one of those people that do actually use clipboards. Um, printer photo paper, probably better stored where the printer lives, which is not in here. Um, so I will see if there's space where the other paper is in my partner's office. Um, more photo paper, like one piece of photo paper, but still photo paper. Um, what is this? What is this? What is this? What is this? What's this? Do, 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 do. Um, ah, a brief moment where I thought it was a good idea to join a committee and they can have all of that back because I don't, I don't, I don't work well on committees. Um, and I did warn them when I joined and um, as soon as it got too committee-like, I said goodbye. <laughs> um, that can go. I'm going to keep that as research. Um, that needs a, pa a packet to put it in, but that's not going to be. Oh, we've only got one of those left, so I can now use that. Awesome. I was waiting to find a folder, and now I have a folder. There we go. That needs to be kept for the moment. It's not long term. It's long. I need to keep it for a little while, but it doesn't need its own folder but it can go in there for the moment that is fine I mean the basis being that eventually all of this will fit in a slightly bigger filing cabinet but at the moment it does not um some extra books some extra notepads that just are probably not going to get Used. Would I use that? Would I use that? Notepads are hard, dude. Like, it just, they are <laughs> just hard. You're never sure whether you're going to use them or not. Um, but that does reduce that down substantially. Substantially. I'm going to keep a couple of paper ones, but the person that's most likely to send letters is my other half. And so I'm going to see if he has an envelope stash in his office and then those can go with those. Um, these are quite useful for um, vintage when they're tiny things. So I'm actually going to put those with my vintage packaging because I if I'm sending a do not bend, it's normally bigger than that, so that's fine. These we I do for little budgets and events and stuff, so they're quite useful to have. Um, da -da 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 do I need all these little notebooks? Probably not. My daughter used to love writing in little notebooks, but then she stopped. <laughs> she likes bigger ones. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Um, I'm wondering if they would be useful for party favours. I just don't do party bags. Like, Start with, I was like, oh, we'll just do one thing. We did a really good party bag her first year. And then we're like, we'll just do one thing for the other ones. And then it just became like, oh, my, this is a bit silly. I'm going to put this in here so that I can use it to section off, hopefully, the cable bits. That's my plan, anyway. It's going to create a nice little divider. For the cable stuff to go in here too it's not perfect but like i said i don't i'm not happy with my desk set up completely so i don't want to invest lots of money in a system that is not going to be right i'm still not going to like um 
and at some point I will be happy with my desk and my drawers and then I can work out exactly what I want to do with everything. But until then, no need to spend money on something new that isn't needed. Keep those in there. Those in there. And then if I stand you up right. Mm. Try again. Kind of could do with. Oh, there we go. Just to stop them getting any beaten up anymore. Will they go in there? Yeah, they will. They will. Wonderful. There we go. Stop them getting any beaten up and trashed. I'm going to do that. Stand them on their end. And then there's a lovely convenient slot for that bad boy to go in. Amazing. It's taken me a long time to get down to this short amount of stuff. Like this isn't, it wasn't naturally like this. This is, I don't know, I think, I think office stuff was one of my biggest hoarding spots. Um, I did not want to let go of office related things. Um, it felt a bit too like, ah, it's gonna be really important. And in the end it's not. <laughs> Not. I'm going to put that one into my daughter's section for another day. She's the one most likely to grow in sections wise. Um, so that's that all away. And yes, victory. I've got it all into one basket as the goal was intended. I'm going to use the other basket to dump all the rubbish. I didn't have to use any of my boxes, which is good. I can put those back in here, which is now pretty much empty after we did the 33 challenge. Um, and then I'm also going to, that's headphones, isn't it? So that's staying up here. And um, at some point this all, this needs, it's minimized, it's categorized, but it's not I wouldn't call this organized. It's not organized enough for me. Um, but I don't really, and I'm not keen on the baskets. They look cute, but actually they, anything solid damages them. So I wouldn't recommend these ones, these Ikea ones. I like Ikea cubes ones, but these basket ones, I got them when my mum passed away, they came from hers. Um, but I wouldn't buy them myself um, because they are a little bit too flimsy for anything with sharp edges. Like, and by sharp edges, I mean like a notebook, <laughs> not, not like a blade sharp edge. Um, but because of what they're made out of, they're not really very good for clothing either because they snag things and stuff gets stuck on them. Um, I can't actually think of what would be good in them. <laughs> Soft toys, maybe, but then they're not really very bust enough. So adult soft toy collection. So if you have soft toys and you're an adult that's careful with their boxes, then it would be appropriate. But otherwise, it's just just doesn't quite work. Um, so eventually, like I said, I will have a wonderful plan of what I want to do and then I will get something appropriate. But at the moment, I'm just gonna use this inappropriate box until something else comes along. Um, I have some of the other like fold up Ikea cube ones. So it might, I might use one of those as one of those becomes available um, or something like that instead. Because yeah, this just doesn't, does not float my boat. Um, nope. And I don't feel like it will get much smaller than this now. So whereas if I would got something new when I was using two of them, I'd have bought two things and then I'd be like, this is too much stuff. I want less stuff. Um, and I've got two little drawers on my desk. Um, but I'll be honest, at the moment, my desk is also covered in laundry. So you think this looks organised. You should see the rest of the room. This is very much uh, Instagram, not Instagram bit. Um, my office is usually fairly tidy and um, I've just we've been painting so much the last few days that I normally do my little resets and I haven't. I've just come in, taken the painty stuff off, folded it in on itself so it doesn't get paint everywhere and then left it on the floor and the next morning put it back on again. Um, so it just doesn't, I haven't, yeah. I will probably tidy it up in the morning. I would have done it this morning, but I was going 
often under Hampshire. So um, whereas I normally do a little reset each morning and it'd be tidier, but um, it's also a big cupboard behind there, the cupboard that I have all the stuff for sale in. Oh, at least I rejig and I'm halfway through rejigging it because I haven't actually got time I want to allocate to it. So I just keep doing little bits when I gain five minutes here or five minutes there because I'd much rather be painting at the moment. Um, but it's, I think we need so much less in our offices now from a, just an office admin standpoint. I remember as kids, my mum always having an office and having to have so much stuff in it. And that was even when she didn't have a business, which most of the time she had something going on. Um, but there was just, there was always loads and loads of paperwork that had to be kept. And we felt like we had, you had to keep every electric bill and every this bill and every that bill. And actually now we can just go online and see them. And how often do we even bother doing that? Like, let's be honest. Um, well, more cost of living crisis, yes, more. But um, if we know it's a fixed rate or it's paid, that like we don't keep checking back on it all the time, that like we don't go back through our historic bills and things. Um, I think that was much more a, a fun hobby of the past. And it can stay there, to be honest. I'm not that interested <laughs> in engaging in that hobby. Um, but as always, five steps. Categorise, minimise, organise, systemize and glamorize um i have my systems in place even though i don't want to call this completely organized it's as organized as it's going to get at the moment but the glamorized bit would be having um a box that i really liked both look of and style wise but until i get my desk space completely sorted there is no point in me getting a basket so until you've got your shelves your cupboards your drawers you don't want to buy your draw dividers. You don't want to buy your organisational basket. I mean, I just wouldn't recommend a basket for an office organisation. <laughs> um, but this this was free. It was free. This one, I'm going to glue repair it. We do have three of them, so I might I'll probably wait until I finish using all of them and repair them all, and then um, and then sell them on to somebody. Somebody will use them. Um. Just not me. Just not me. Um, we are back tomorrow. I've got two tomorrow. Two tomorrow. Um, oh look, we've oh, we've we've actually done it in the hour today. That's always good. Um, so tomorrow. Um, pick up my phone. I've got four million messages from people so tomorrow we have junk drawer i'm a bit scared of that i'm, I'm not gonna lie um do you have a routine for paper and oh yes i will talk about that in a second um so tomorrow at 10 a.m we have junk drawer um and then we are doing landing station and coat cupboard at two and i'm gonna try and go to the gym between the two of those <laughs> she says I'm ever hopeful. Or maybe I'll go after the landing station because then I have, uh, no, because I've got an interview at 6.30. So I probably, oh, well, no, we could do that. Landing. Uh, but, mm. Yeah, I might go to the gym afterwards. I can do some office work in between because I'm really behind on a couple of bits. Um, so yes, junk drawer. Anyway, that doesn't change what you need to do. Junk drawer at 10 and then landing station at two o'clock tomorrow um so we got a question in the commands um well done. do you have a routine for paperwork and admin yes i do um so i have um an hour once a month scheduled on to do life admin things sometimes if it's just a five minute job i tend to just do it as soon as i can um any post that comes in gets opened on the day um, and then can go into the relevant office. So if it's for my partner, it can go into his office. And if it's for me, it comes into my office. If it needs imminently doing, it stays on my desk because anywhere else it won't get done. <laughs> so it has to stay on my desk. I clear my desk down usually at the end of every day. If not, I will do it first thing in the morning. So I, by the time I'm like before my daughter gets up, I will clear my desk if I haven't the night before. Like tonight, I'm going to go and do another 45 minutes of painting 
so probably won't quit my desk tonight well no actually it's a pile of laundry that will get moved over to actually where it's going and, and I'll put it away in the morning um and so if there's a piece of paper on my desk I will actually do it whereas if you have loads and loads of stuff on your desk popping an urgent piece there is probably not going to work so you need to find somewhere that's spare that's going to stand out so if you don't use your fridge for anything you could pin that urgent thing to the fridge with a magnet not an actual pin because that would not be recommended pinning an actual pin to your thing or you can get pit and magnets with clips on you could use something like that but just a big magnet and um, but again if your fridge is covered in things you wouldn't want to do that so you want to find somewhere that is going to stand out so you deal with it like imminently and um, ideally on the day and and then I actually have a like a letter rack thing on my edge of my desk and um, that I put bits into um so I've got do a lot of stuff on Vinted. I've got my Vinted receipts in there. Um, and then once a month, I tend to go through there because the delivery is so slow. Um, once a month, I'll go through and clear out the ones that have been um, arrived and the um, and that they've marked as accepted. Um, and then I've got some longer term, but not worth filing. That stuff will sit in there. Things that need to be a sort of over the next sort of month and things that need to be dealt with, um, but don't necessarily need to be done today. But what I will do is before they go in there. Um, so at the moment, I've got a um, load of stuff relating to my autism and ADHD assessments and things that I've got to go through. It's not urgent, but it does need to be doing. So I haven't just put the paperwork in there. I've then put that onto my to do list as well um that that otherwise it will sit there i don't need to find it a permanent home it only needs a semi semi-permanent home but if i just put it in that letter rack and didn't write it on my to-do list it would never get done so that could be quite a good one if it's not an urgent thing if it's something you've got a little bit of a window of time is don't just put it to one side is make a list of all the ones um, and i do so people if they've got a big pile of paperwork to work through um is to go through each one and just make a list of the action that needs to happen for each one um, and then work through your list instead of having this overwhelming pile of paperwork. Um, so if you've got a big pile that's mounted up, literally you'd be like, I'm not gonna deal with them now. I'm just gonna do my first step. My first step, I'm gonna go through each thing. What actually needs to happen with this? And I'll write it on my list. If it's not very obvious what needs to happen with the thing. So here's my here's my pile that I'm going through and I'm like oh okay so this needs to be sent to the plumber I write on my list send form to the plumber and then I would probably write or stick a post-it on here or something and just be like send to plumber like if this is if I was completely overwhelmed with things if it was really obvious what it was and where it was meant to be going I would probably just put it on my list um, and then I could have my list and go, right, these are the urgent ones that I'm going to deal with. Um, and you could split as you were going into the urgent and non-urgent piles as well. Um, and it starts to break it down, trying to just deal with a massive pile. Or you could be like, I'm just going to deal with five things. I'm going to do five things today. Um, I'm going to set aside like 20 minutes each day to do five more things off my pile. Um, I think I need to start by clearing my desk. Our clear workspace is magical. Um, so this desk that I've got at the moment, and this is kind of I do when I don't like about it, is it's got a wooden with a glass top and a gap between the two. So my work surface can be clear, but I can still have things laid out underneath. Um, and I think that would be hugely beneficial for some people. For me, I just find it distracting, if I'm completely honest. And it was an emergency fix situation desk wise. Um, I bought this desk home to list um, for free on Facebook Marketplace for a client and it ended up in my office. Um, but I do like the adjustable height legs. So maybe I'll just change the top and do something else with the legs. But I don't know. It's, just, it doesn't like, it's not my jam. Um, we will find something better at some point. Um, but that's quite, yeah, quite cool is you could. And you could do that to any desk that you've got. You just put some beads of wood and a sheet of like really really heavy reinforced glass on the top so that you've got you can see all the bits that are under there um but it's quite good then if I'm working on something and I don't want to put it away away I can put it under that glass screen and I've still cleared my desk for the evening um I find having my desk cleared every evening really really helpful um 
but like I said, I'm just I'm not complete. I'm not completely happy, but that clearing it down does make a massive difference. Um, but yeah, dealing with it, it's like one touch thing with post. I think post can build up so much and then it becomes really scary sat there in these envelopes looking at you. And then when you actually open it, half of it is just rubbish. <laughs> half of it is rubbish. You open your bank statement and you've got like your bank statement and then you've got a page about the interest rates and then you've got a page about the terms and conditions that they've included with everything. And then you've got this and then you've got that and you've got a letter for if you need to send something back with it. But actually you just needed the bank statement. Everything else in the envelope is rubbish. And you thought you had this really thick envelope that was freaking you out. And actually you just need to file the bank statement. And that is it. I didn't even get bank statements. Oh, I just stick with the digitals, um, which would be part of the minimizing process. So, um, we talk about that in the course. We've got the two elements to minimising. You've got turning off the tap and clearing up the flood. So clearing up the flood is going through obviously the piles of paperwork, but turning off the tap is reducing how much stuff is coming in. So that's unsubscribing from things. Um, that would be switching over to digital uh, invoices, digital billing. That is going to turn the tap off to all that additional paperwork that comes in because it's not just that piece of paper that we need. Um, we get so much extra stuff with it. Um, I mean, even just the envelope is extra paper to deal with. Um, my partner has a lot more long term paperwork that he has to store for work and he will keep putting things, fold it back up and put it back in the envelope. And I'm like, that is not a useful way of storing things. <laughs> and it drives me nuts. And they're all they're boxed up and in the loft like they're not in the way. But it drives me nuts. that I know. <laughs> I know in the loft with every like invoice is an extra piece of paper that doesn't need to be there, a.k.a. the envelope. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. There have been nights where I've laid awake going, ah, oh, there's so many envelopes on there. <laughs> when I can't sleep. Um, a lot of people talk about this out of sight, out of mind. No, it's never, it's never out of my mind. It's always in my mind. Anyway. I'm going to go and finish up my painting. Um, thank you for joining me. Um, it's nice to see, see you, but sort of see your comments, Michelle. Um, virtually sort of see you. Um, and I'm slowly trying to upload these onto YouTube as well. So the videos from these will be there. But we are four down, six to go. Six to go, another two tomorrow. Um, yeah, and they're actually all be done by the 21st of October. So it's not even 10 within the 10th month. It's 10 by the 21st of the month um, because we have a lot going on with half term after that. Um, have an amazing evening. Uh, hopefully see you tomorrow. Uh, so we've got a 10 o'clock and a 2 o'clock. Um, I've tried to do all of them at different times, different days. So it suits more people. Um, We'll see. We'll see. I'll go back through them afterwards and see how many people watched at what time. And then next time I'll just do them all at that time. <laughs> and I will go. Ta-ta for now.